What's up guys, welcome to another Modern Deck Tech. This is talking about a Vampire Madness deck in Modern. Had a comment in the last video talking about a Madness deck and I was like, maybe I can make a Red Black Magnus deck or maybe I can just make a Vampire Madness deck. And that is what this video is, so let's jump right into it. So if you guys do not know, Madness is an ability whenever you discard a card, normally the spell that you discarded will be cheaper in some way or have an extra ability in some way. And that is exactly what this deck does. And it does it really, really well, surprisingly well, way better than I thought it ever would actually. So this is Madness Vampire. So it's kind of got a vampire spin to it as well. And we have 30 creatures in the deck list in total. So a lot of creatures for us to kind of sink our teeth into, pardon the pun. <laughs> but first up for us, we got to talk about a card that's uh, basically in, in a lot of Madness decks and in a lot of really good decks right now in Modern, and that is Bloodgast. It is a two black, uh, two one, can't block, it's a vampire. And whenever we play a land, we can play it from the battlefield or from the graveyard onto the battlefield. So very, very good. And also if our opponent has 10 or less life, it also has haste as well. So extremely good, a great discard trigger for us as well. If we really need to get something out of our hand and we don't want to discard anything important, Bloodgast can definitely go there. If not, we can play it out for two black mana, but it is a bit more difficult to do that. Uh, but very good in the early game, very good in the mid game, and extremely good in the late game when you have a lot of stuff in the graveyard. But moving on from that, we have Captivating Vampire. I'm kind of going alphabetically here. Captivating Vampire is a three mana two, two. Other vampires you control get plus one, plus one. There's only two in the deck list here other than the four with the blood ghast. Uh, but we can tap five uh, untapped vampires we control and control uh, take control of a opponent's creature on their side of the field, which is very nice. Very good in the mid to late game. A very good against more grindy slow matchups where they have like massive bombs, Nia the Reliquary, a giant Eldrazi, something like that. We want to take control of it, turn it into a vampire also, and uh, use it on our side of the field. Normally, when we do that, it's going to cause a, uh, usually a scoop from the opponent, uh, but only two in here because it is a bit difficult to cast since it is three mana, and this deck is all about being very low to the ground and cheap. Next up for us, at the one drop slot, we have four Falconrath Gorger. This is a one mana two one. That alone is pretty good as a vampire, but also it gives all of our vampires madness as well that are in our hands. So our blood gas, if we do discard that and we do have enough black mana to play it that turn, if we wanna discard it and the madness trigger triggers on that, we can actually cast it with a madness trigger, which is actually quite good. Other than that though, the Falconrath Gorger is just a decent one mana two one for us. Uh, not really doing too much else besides giving our other vampires madness, but still very, very good in the madness deck overall, as it does give us good options uh, to play stuff that we discard. Card. Next up for us, we have Incorrigible Youths. This is a five mana four three. Uh, it has haste, but it has madness for three. We're never gonna cast this for five mana. That's insane. Do not do that. Bad decision there. But we do wanna cast this for three mana because we definitely can, and we normally can on turn three every single time we turn, get it into our hand. You'll see that in the matches for sure. Uh, but a very powerful card, very good card because of the four power coming in and uh, just swinging for face immediately. Uh, and of course can come in during your attack step and swing in as well. So very good card. Doesn't seem like it's very good on paper, but with Madness decks here and with all of the vampire kind of buffs we have in the format itself or in the deck itself, it's just a very good card overall. So Madness is all about discarding cards. What happens if we run out of cards in our hand? We have Asylum Visitor here, a two mana three one. That alone is pretty decent in the modern formats. Uh, but if we have no cards or if our opponent has no cards in hand, we draw a card and lose one life. So we're actually drawing two cards. The turn we have zero cards in hand, which gives us a great way uh, to kind of refill our hand for discard outlets, outlets uh, or kind of gives us ability to kind of replay our creatures onto the battlefield. So very good card in the mid to late game, especially in the late game where we have nothing in our hand and we're kind of hell bent which is being, you know, no cards in hand as well. A uh, very good card for us in the Vampire deck list. Under the Raid Lord for us is the Stormkirk or Stormkirk Condemned. Uh, this is a two black mana, two, two vampire. We can discard a card and vampires you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. And you can only activate this once each turn. Uh, if we did have the ability to stack this, that would be amazing and very quick. Uh, but we can only do this once per turn. And that does mean during our opponent's turn as well. So if we have like a nice board wide pump on our side of the field and they go for Anger of the Gods, we might be able to save our creatures if we discard a card with Captivating Vampire. Either way, great card sets us up for a Madness Trick Trigger, just an overall great vampire in our deck list again. One of the best madness triggers for vampires here is the Voldaren Pariah. This is a five mana, a three, three flyer. Now we can discard this into madness trigger, which means we have to pay for three black mana. And it does come in this way, but it's also just pretty decent doing that. Uh, but the best part about this is we can sacrifice three creatures, three other creatures, and transform this into a six, five flyer. And when it does transform, your opponent has to sacrifice three creatures. 
ridiculous, amazing against a tempo deck, amazing against a, a humans deck. Just a great card overall, if, especially if they have lots of like powerful cards on their side of the field, they just played out for free or something like that, like a Halloween deck. You just have them immediately sack it thanks to the Pariah here. And it's, Honestly, it's so impressive that this goes off so frequently in the deck list that it's ridiculous. I love this card. I'm glad it's a four of in the deck list. Moving on. The last card in here in the deck list is probably one of the best ones. This is a four of Fury Blade Vampire, a two mana, one, two. Very good overall, because we get to discard a card during our combat step and it gets plus three, plus zero. This card also has trample, meaning it's a four, two trampler on turn three. Very powerful, can trade up for sure. Can usually trade with a hollow one pretty easily. And of course, if we have a Cathfading Vampire or a Stormkirk Condemned, this does become a 5-3 as well. Uh, just a great card to be able to pump and kind of get in a ton of damage. Overall, amazing card here. Always gonna be super powerful to the board state and can definitely get off a Madness Trigger. You can, you know, discard an Encourage use this card, play it that turn if you can on turn three and get in for nine points of damage on turn three. If opponent doesn't have removal that turn, they're basically going to, uh, you know, lose the game if they don't continually either block these creatures or, you know, of course, remove them. But that is it for our creatures here. Let's get into our spells. We have a four of Faithless Looting. This is here mostly just to get more, uh, you know, the Madness triggers, the discard triggers here, or to draw into, you know, if we're getting into a lot of land, Kind of filtering out the land, filtering out blood gas. We don't want to play those out. We want to make sure they hit the graveyard first before we can hit a land and then they come out. A very good card for us. Also has flashback for three. So just a very good card overall. Fight the Saluting again, one of the best cards in modern as far as just a decent card for you to draw me mechanics. Um, good card in Hollow One, good card in Madness. Love it in this list. Collective Brutality is another card that's very good in the black uh, kind of sphere for modern. It's two mana sorcery. It has three different abilities here and the Escalate trigger here, which means we can discard a card each time to make sure we can get the actual additional trigger on this card. So you can do a negative two, negative two on target creature. You can gain two life, your opponent can lose two life, or you can look at your opponent's hand and make them discard an instant or sorcery spell. And of course, you can pay two mana and discard two cards, which could set up another, again, good stuff for a madness trigger. So very good card overall. A great card to have in the main board against a lot of decks right now, especially against a lot of removal. If they're tapped out on a creature play, turn two, go for a, you know, a, a collective brutality and grab it. A path to Exile, grab, grab a Fatal Push, grab a Lightning Bolt. Very good for that particular matchup. And the last spell in here besides lands, we have Fiery Temper, a complete four of. This is a three mana instant, deal three damage to any target or target creature or player. Um, it also has Madness, and when you discard it, it's only one red mana. So it's basically a Lightning Bolt. The reason you don't want to have Lightning Bolt over Fiery Temper here is because when you have discard outlets like the, uh, the Fury Blade Vampire, you discard, if you discard a Lightning Bolt, you just discard a Lightning Bolt. You, you don't get to use it. With Fiery Temper, you discard a card and you actually get the ability to use it as well. So one of the best cards in here for you for tempo, great for removing creatures early on in the game to make sure your Adept or Vampires can kind of get through as quickly as possible. Just a great card overall in the Madness list. But that is it for all the cards besides lands. We have 20 lands in the deck list, a little low, but because of Faithless Looting and because of our, uh, you know, other things in the deck list that kind of give us the ability to draw some extra cards, uh, this should be fine for us. Uh, we have four Bloodstained Mire and, of course, four Dragon Skull Summits. Um, that's really it for, like, the dual lands here, and everything else is just going to be swamps and mountains. That's seven swamp and three mountain. More swamps than mountains uh, really in the deck list here because of course we have lots of black mana to use and not as much red mana. Really the red mana is for the Fiery Temper, the Faithless Looting, and the Falcon Wrath Gorger, and that's about it. That triple black mana for the Pariah is quite difficult to get out on turn three uh, if we don't have a lot of black mana in the deck list. But that is it in the game one here. Let's get to the sideboard and see what we're looking at here. First up, we have Confler Gate. This is a X, X and red uh, card here. A very interesting card for us because it's basically a board white spell, but also when it goes to the graveyard, if we can't use it on turn on the turn it's played, uh, we have a flashback spell here and it's discard X cards for this. Again, getting off a lot of madness triggers for us as well. So very powerful in that respect. A very good card basically being able to wipe a board state uh, or you know just kind of get off extra madness triggers in your hand. We also have Gatekeeper of Malak here, a double black 2-2 two -two, uh, with Kicker for one. And if we do pay the Kicker, opponent has to sacrifice a creature. This is very good against the uh, Tempo decks, very good against the Aggro decks. If they got Tarmogoyce or Death Shadows, no problem. We're gonna play Gatekeeper of Malak here and deal with it. And what would a modern deck be without a Thoughtseize? We have two Thoughtseize in the sideboard here. You could go Inquisition of Kozilek here. I prefer Thoughtseize against uh, the, you know, the more uh, like Cryptic Commands, the Spell Queller decks, those kind of things. A little bit more impactful for us in those particular matchups, but you still can go for Inqu Inquisition if Thoughtseize is a bit too pricey for your deck. 
And of course, to deal with the more tempo and aggro stuff, the Tarmogoyfs, the, uh, you know, hollow ones if you have a fetch land on the battlefield. We have a Fatal Push for us. We have three Fatal Push in the sideboard here. These are definitely coming in against the more creature-based matchups, not against the control-based matchups or maybe even the combo-based matchups like Storm or anything like that, but very good at being able to deal with the Tarmogoyf, Death Shadow, and so on. We also have three Abrade here for the Chalice decks, the Vile decks, and uh, kind of strangely enough, the Artifact decks like uh, Affinity and of course, the Tron decks that are out there in the format. There's three Abrade here. It's also pretty good to bring in against a heavy creature-based deck as well because Abrade can do three uh, points of damage to a target creature as well. Otherwise, it's just going to destroy target artifact. And the last two cards in the deck list here is basically against Dredge. We have two Graft Digger's Cage. You could put Tormat's Crypt or something like that in the deck list as well. I like Graft Digger's Cage just a little bit more because again, they can't leave the graveyard. So very good against the Arc Light Phoenix decks that are kind of coming around right now in modern, as well as their Dredge decks just in general. Um, and of course, anything else that we don't like that has to deal with graveyard incursion. But that is gonna do it for the deck list guys. If you want to build this on MTGO Traders, it's coming to about 126 tickets. You could almost say this is a budget build for modern. And I believe in paper, it's coming to about 300 or so bucks if you want to build this as well. Again, pretty budget considering the uh, the modern formats, uh, but a very powerful deck list. So let's get into the matches here and see how this deck performs. All right guys, let's get into some matches with the Vampire Madness. Really excited to show this deck off. Honestly, this deck performed way better than I thought it ever could. Like, seriously. <laughs> was really excited to see, show this off. Um, Fury of Blade Vampire is like the, like, I don't know, underestimated, like, all-star card in this deck list. It's so good. It, it's 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 ridiculous. Bird Spread is here for the opponent. Gonna go with a pass here. And then uh, we're gonna go for a, probably a Fury Blade add up immediately and start getting off the uh, the triggers. We could go with a Collective Brutality to bolt the bird if you want to. Yeah, let's do let's do it for that. Let's discard a uh, Asylum Visitor here. We're not gonna do the Madness trigger on the, with the Gorger, but we are gonna get rid of the Birds of Paradise and uh, just get in for two. Let's see, get rid of uh, ooh Molten Rain and Stone Rain. Let's get rid of uh, probably Molten Rain. No, Stone Rain. Stone Rain sounds better because it's double red. Now they do have enough mana, so they can do turn three with a land destruction spell. All right, gonna go, uh, hmm. let's go Bloodstained Mire into a Fury Blade Vampire. So one thing we could have done there that was a little bit more uh, efficient for us is we could have gone uh, Fury Blade Vampire, discard Bloodgast, play our land, and then get Bloodgast onto the battlefield that way. Molten Rain here, let's go for a different card. Let's go for Asylum Visitor. There we go. We still get the situa same situation here, so not too terrible. Getting in for six, dropping them down to ten here, and then playing out a Dragon Skull Summit, bringing back a Bloodgast with haste. So not bad. Uh, we have the expansion there. Going for a Rampant Growth. No, or Expedition, not Expansion. Sorry, Expedition. This is definitely a Ramp deck, maybe an Amulet deck. Haven't seen what it's doing yet as far as in-game. Got two lands, thanks to the visitor there. Let's just discard a land here. Discard a swamp, perhaps. Reading the ooze there real quick. Get rid of the swamp and get in for as much damage as we possibly can this turn. I assume they'll block the 4-2. No, they're gonna block the 3-1. Makes sense there, since they can't offer a trade. We have lethal, though. Is that gonna do it? Two cards in hand. They don't have it. Nice. No anger of gods for them. Let's see. Maybe take out Faithless Looting for this matchup and bring in some gatekeepers. And I uh, just hit submit. Really interested to see to see what the opponent is actually on here. Uh, but if they have, you know, we'll see. Uh, Cat Fighting Vampire Vamp uh, Fury Blade. This is very good for us. Forest for the opponent. See me in Spirit Guide into a Rampant Growth. So two lands on turn one. Let's go Bloodstained Mire Pass. Five cards in hand for the opponent. Looks like a pass here. Let's go Bloodstained Mire and grab a Blood Crypt. Lay a land. Go Fury Blade Vampire. Again, we like all the black mana in our hand because of the Pariah, so... Ooh, Stone Rain hitting our Blood Crypt there. Let's go uh, Condemned here. And we can go with a... Discard a Bloodgast and discard maybe a... Yeah, Asylum Visitor and get in for uh, five. Nice! <laughs> Opponent didn't hit their third land drop. Oh, man. Ain't it the way. Ain't it the way, though. Most of, the, most of the time in modern, uh, you know, you're really having to struggle uh, for that land drop because, again, you have a lot of fetch lands in the deck list, so it can help you as far as thinning the deck to get more lands into your hand. Um, but most modern decks are going to have, you know, 20, 22 lands in total. So 
you sometimes struggle to find that land. I'm gonna go for a blood crypt, pay the two life and go for a gorger. Again, we're opting for the blood crypt here because of the pariah in our hand. Okay, this is a maybe a weird soul sisters deck. Asylum Visitor for, for us. Gaining one life here for the opponent, going up to 29. Have Fiery Temper uh, for the attendant here. Cryptolith Rites, no problem. For another attendant, okay. Gonna go Dragon Skull Summon into a Stromkirk Condemned. And then, uh, of course, they gain two life. Let's go for a Fiery Temper and try and get rid of a attendant here and get in for five, six, seven. Not bad. We also have Encourageable Youths next turn, and if we had a black mana, we can go with a Pariah. We'll see, though. Pride Mate from the opponent here. It's a 3-3, three, three. and another... Uh, it's a Warden here. Another life gain thing, thing. so it's a 4-4. Four, four. Hmm. Sort of at an impasse here. I think we still want to go with Encourageable Youths here. Go Madness Trigger. Play that out. We don't have Fatal Pushes in our deck list, so we're really going to struggle with uh, the Pride Mate here. We're going to attack out, though. Since it is just a 6-6, six, six, I'd assume they'd want to block the 5-4 uh, here. Just trying to offer it up. No, opponent's going to take it. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting on that. One card in hand for the opponent. Not sure why they would take that. Maybe because they think we have Gutshot in our hand. That could be it. Gutshot is kind of a prevalent card in the Rakdos decks in Modern. Yeah, it looks like a scoop for them. Let's get into game two. Gonna go with a Fury Blade out of gear to that. Bring in Gatekeeper of Malak here and just hit Submit. We could have brought in some Fatal Pushes there, but let's see. Two lands, uh, vampire, uh, Fury Blade Vampire, and a Condemned. Not bad. With a Gatekeeper, I'll take that. Let's go Blood Crypt and Tapped, and pass turn. We also have three black mana for a Pariah, so that's very good as well. Six cards in hand for the opponent. I'm not going to discard anything to the uh, Vampire right now. I really love the Gatekeepers because of the uh, Soul uh, Sisters that are having played out. Let's go with the Blood Crypt and say yes. Go with Condemned here, maybe? Again, kind of misplayed there if we wanted to go with a, a Blood Gas discard here. We can still do that, but we, uh, we do miss the opportunity to play it onto the battlefield, so. A little bit of a fumble there. Best theory coming in, scrying them for one. Five cards in hand for the opponent on their upkeep, drawing into their sixth card. Would really love to play the Pariah this turn, but Soul Warden's coming out. They do draw a card. Hmm, and another Soul Warden. It might be better to play Gatekeeper of Malakir here, or Encourageable Youths. Either way, we're doing really well here. We could also go Faithless Looting, but I think we just want to go Gatekeeper here to get rid of a Soul Warden, just to kind of keep them a little bit slower. And then, uh, not going to use the uh, Fury Blade Adapt's ability here, I don't believe. We could go with the, okay, we'll go with faith, uh, Encourageable, Encourageable Youths. We could have gone with the Faithless Looting there, because Encourageable Use could be played next turn, but I think uh, we want to make sure we keep them back on their heels as quickly as possible. Going with a Genesis Chamber. Now this is really interesting because we have the Pariah coming in next turn if we, if we want it, and they have three creatures, so we can go Pariah. Let's go Blood Crypt, bring in the Blood Ghast. We do create a 1-1. One -one. They do gain lots of life here. They go to 20. I think we want to go Faithless Looting. We also have Fiery Temper here and a Pariah. Goodness. Let's discard the Pariah and discard the Gatekeeper and Madness the Pariah in. This does mean we get more tokens, so we can sacrifice the tokens and the Bloodgast. Create a 6-5, and they have to sack their entire board, which is very good. And then uh, let's just attack in here. We're not going to use the Vampire's ability here. We're just going to get in for uh, five points of damage. Down to 19. The Scry ability from the Bestiary is actually really good for them right now because uh, 
They're gaining so much life. They have the ability to kind of bounce back. Ooh, Oblivion Ring for the uh, Pariah there. Not good. Another Essence Warden coming in. They have two 1-1s one on the battlefield. Let's discard a card with the Pariah. Just play another one. Seems decent. And then uh, let's just discard Fiery Temper. To the uh, Fury Blade. And then get rid of their uh, Warden here. That way we, do, we don't have any trades or anything like that. Let's get in for tons of damage. Six down to 12. Okay, cool. Play Bloodgast after the Bloodstained Mire. And uh, hope they don't have a Settle or a uh, Board Wipe. They don't! Nice! <laughs> Let's get it into match three here. Again, Fury Blade Adept being the uh, low-key all-star of this entire deck list. No land hand going into a three land hand. So we're going to go with a key with a, a Condemned on top. Urza's Tower here. Ugh. Are we seeing Tron? Looks like we're seeing Tron. Here's a Temple. We're going to go with a Chalice on one. Interesting. Luckily for us, we only have uh, one spell in our entire deck list that is on one. Um, so let's go with the Collective Brutality. Just look at their hand. we got Reshaper, not, Thought Not Seer, and Walking Ballista. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Opponent accidentally hits si uh, F6 there. That's funny. Yep, accidentally passed turn. Let's go with the Fury Blade add up. We're going to take advantage of this misplay and um, get in for nothing. Um, want to save Fiery Temper for um, something else. They may grab it, though. I feel like they're going to grab the Condemned, though. Nope, they grabbed the Temper. Okay, they grabbed the Temper instead. That seems fine. Let's go with the... Get rid of and get, uh, get an Encourageable Youths in and get in for eight points of damage. They do take that. Go to, go to 12. Another Eldrazi Temple here. Going for a Matter Reshaper. Passing turn back. Let's go with a Condemned here. We could go Asylum Visitor, but I think we want to get both triggers off with the Adapt and the uh, Condemned here. Getting in for eight. Let's see how they block. Kind of block that way. Mm, let's hold on to the Asylum Visitor here so we can just replay it. They got a waste out of that. And then uh, main phase two, we're going to play Asylum Visitor and pass turn. We could have held on to that or discarded it for the Condemned to get an extra point of damage in, but we should be fine. Here's a 5-5 five, five into a bar uh, Ballista. Almost said Barista. <laughs> Walking Barista. They kill our Asylum Visitor so we don't draw twice. We do get a Blood Gast here, which is not bad. Not great though, they're down to six. We're kind of nearing a uh, fiery temper range. We could attack in for our four two if we want to, but I think we're just gonna pass a turn here. Two cards in hand drawing into the third. Looks like they got an Urza's Mine. Drawing a card with the uh, Endbringer. Playing out another Chalice, but the Chalice is on two now. So Fury Blade cannot be cast, I believe. So we're gonna discard it to the Condemned here. Let's get in for 5-4. Let's get in for everybody. Let's we'll see how they how they block here. Keep in mind the blood gas can come back, so yeah, they're gonna block that way, no problem. Drawing a card with the Inbringer. The drawing a card ability here is really um, aggressive, so we really wanna make sure that we get good attacks in here. Now, if we draw into a Fiery Temper, that's great. If we don't, we're dead, basically. Oh, there's Ulamog, never mind. <laughs> gonna go with a scoop here. Let's bring in Thoughtsies and the Gatekeepers here. We could bring in maybe a Braid for those Chalices. Take out one Encourageable Youth and the Captivating Vampires and just hit Submit. Play first, yes. Four mana hand, a little bit of a um, mana intensive hand, but not terrible thanks to the Fury Blade Adapt here. Lots of discard outlets for us. Urza's Mind from the opponent. Let's go with a uh, Fury Blade Adapt and pass. We'd like to go for probably Hmm. Battery Shaper here. Let's do a land. Let's just play out the Blood Gas. We could have played out the Encourageable Use that turn. Just wanted to kind of save that for next turn. Again, kind of did it a little bit awkward, but we still got the Fiery Temper discard for the, the uh, Fury Blade. Chalice on one. Let's go with a land here. Discard Encourageable Youths and uh, play that out. Getting in for 10 points of damage on turn four. Not bad at all. Down to 16, or six, not 16. <laughs> here comes in Reality Smasher. We've got Condemned here, which is not bad. And that's gonna do it, yeah, that's that's a lot of damage that they can't do anything about. 
I think we actually keep what we have. I don't think there's anything that we want to bring in. We could bring in another Encourageable Youths. I guess we'll do that. Take out a Pariah. Uh, three land hand. We'll keep that. Six cards in their hand here. They did, did go with a Mulligan. The Jawsy Temple for them. Let's go with a tapped land. Dragon Skull Summit. Pass turn. Should have played Blood Crypt instead of the uh, tap land, but let's go with a Fury Blade Adept once again. And pass turn. The two Fiery Timbers here is really good. Ursa's Power Plant from the opponent. They're attacking in for three. We're going to take the three, go to 17. Our turn again. Let's go for a Bloodstained Mire. Sack that. Go for a... Maybe a Blood Crypt? Let's just go for a Swamp here. Condemned. Discard a Fiery Temper. Warping Wall from the opponent. Now, this is really interesting because it's Exile Target Creature with Power Toughness 1 or less. So we actually go Stormcur Condemned on the uh, Fiery Temper there. So actually, the Vampire survives. And let's get rid of uh, the Blood Crypt. Get in for 5. Warping Wall is super good in the uh, that deck list, but we have just enough to get around it. Endbringer from the opponent. This is a 5-5. Five, five. I think we want to go with a discard here. Go Encourageable Youths. Get that out. Play Blood Crypt and uh, discard a Fiery Temper and just ping them directly and get in for 10. Let's see if they block. This does take them down to 2, so... They probably should block. Yeah, they're gonna get block the uh, the two the five two. We still keep our four three. That is interesting because it does mean that um, they value the Fury Blade Adept's trample ability. There's Walking Barista, <laughs> making us our cappuccino. Ooh, Encourage will use off the top there. Very good. Let's go with Encourage will use Madness Trigger. Get that out. Fantastic. Let's just get in for everybody here, can we? Getting in for thirteen points of damage. Now Barista here is a. Uh, a little annoying, because it's going to be able to kill the uh, Condemned and get them down to two, though. These are both four threes, so one card in hand from the opponent. What do you have here? Barista once again for three. Dragon Skull Summon into a Visitor here. Uh, let's attack in here. Now, the one thing that the, uh, the Ballista can do is they can block one and ping the other to death, so they actually don't take damage this turn. So it gives them an extra turn. However, we will draw a card from the Asylum Visitor this turn. Mindstone from the opponent. Do they draw into anything? Thought not seer. Okay, so that grabs our blood gas. We still have zero cards in hand, meaning. But that's gonna do it. Nice. Oh wow. Very, very nice. Whew. Eldrazi matchups are always super hard, and that was a incredible matchup for us. For uh Vampire Madness. Ah, oh, that was so much fun. All right, let's get into match four here and see what we can do. I would really love to see something a little bit um I don't know, more aggressive. We'll see though. During brewing, uh, went up against a Bant Spirits list and it just mopped the floor with me. Was not excited about that list at all. Let's go with the Mulligan here. Two car or two lands in hand. Fury Blade Adept on top, not bad. Gonna go with an Overgrown Tomb from the opponent. Let's go Blood Crypt and get out a Gorger. Going down to 18. Seven cards in hand, going for a Hardened Scales. Interesting. This is definitely a Hardened Scales deck, so we should be. Oh, there's a push to the Gorger. Let's go Fury Blade Adapt and pass. Five cards in hand from the opponent, going with a Field of Ruin here. Ooh, okay. Rakdos Cackler. Now again, we did a bit of a misplay, but we can't go with the Pariah or the Encourageable Youths. I think we can go either, but let's go Fury, uh, Fiery Temper here and get rid of the Cackler and then play Bloodgast. I think that's a little bit better of a play. Down to 16 for the opponent. Could have done seven damage that turn. There is a Winding Constrictor. I think we want to go with a discard on the Encourageable Youths here. Get that out. And just swing in for everybody. Let's see how they block. Block on the 2-1 here. Take an 8 going down to 8. And next turn, uh, Pariah can actually flip, which is pretty good as well. Two cards in hand going with a Wooded Foothills Sacrifice. Going for a Mountain. Getting out an Ooze and a Tarmogoyf. Oh, this is so good. So spicy. Let's go to the Bloodstained Mire here, and uh, let's discard the Pariah. Get that out onto the battlefield. And then we're going to swing in and see how they're going to block. Keep in mind, it doesn't really matter, because we can just go Pariah flip, and they sacrifice everything. Taking four here. 
I think we want to go with the flip here because of the uh, Tarmogoyf being such a huge threat. They have zero cards in hand, so I'm really happy with this as a way to uh, just destroy their, their board state. The ooze is the thing I was worried about on that side. Let's go Bloodstained Mire into a Bloodgast. Get that back. One card in hand. What do you got? They do have Tree Top, tree, tree top Village, but that's going to do it on game one. Let's get into uh, Cyborg here. I think bringing in Fatal Push or Gatekeeper is also a really good option here for us. Um, probably both. Let's take out the Captivating Vampire. Take out Collective Brutality. Let's bring in one Gatekeeper and just hit Submit. Push is really good against the Tarmogoyfs. Um, key card against that card. Probably a good idea to bring in more Gatekeepers, but we'll see. We'll see how this goes into uh, Game 2 here. Let's see ya. Uh, one mana hand. Hmm. Mulligan. Ooh, no mana. No mana. Oh, let's keep the Blood Crypt. Let's bottom the youths. We need another mana. If we can get another mana off the top, that'd be great. Got a youths there. Let's go with a uh, Gorger Pass. Land for the opponent here. Pass. Fiery Temper. Let's go Faithless Looting. Okay, we have land here. Not bad. Let's keep the uh, Bloodstained Mire and the Get Rid of Encourageable Youths. It's just out of our reach at the moment, so we're not going to use it. Let's go Bloodstained Mire and get in for two here, holding up a Fatal Push. Fatal Push really does help us out here, thanks to cards like, like this card, like Winding Constrictor. Bloodstained Mire for the opponent. Let's go with a push onto uh, the Constrictor. No problem. Three black mana for us now, so Pariah can come out pretty soon. Let's go for two. Could have gone with a Fiery Temper there, but we're going to save that for removal next turn, if we can. Four cards in hand, dropping a fourth land. Bloodstained Mire Sack. Going for a Mountain, looks like. Tarmogoyf coming in, and another Tarmogoyf. Ooh, that's not good. Uh, Blood Gas is here for us, so let's get that out. F fiery Temper. The, the problem here with Fiery Temper is that we can't really attack in with the vampire because they could just block with the other Tarmogoyf. So let's discard the temper and hit them directly and then pass turn. This is a bit of a stalling spot for us. Push off the top is really good. So let's go with a push onto a Tarmogoyf here. We don't really want to attack, but we can though if we want to. I think we're going to wait a turn. Land drop for the opponent. Keep in mind they have Treetop Village as well. So let's go Faithless Looting here, maybe. Hmm. Let's go Faithless Looting from the Graveyard. That way we have one card in hand. Let's get rid of the Faithless Looting and the Bloodgast. Again, can't cast it. But as soon as we hit a, hit a uh, land, we can bring it back from the Graveyard, so that's pretty good. Opponent just showing that they had Treetop Village <laughs> for some reason. Two cards in hand from the opponent here, hitting a Bloodstained Mire once again. Passing turn. Asylum Visitor for us. Let's get that out. Potential graph that they want to, but they're not going to do that for our creature. Again, could go Bloodstained Mire. Let's just go Fury Blade Adapt here. Let's try and get in for everything if we can. No? Okay. Maybe not. Lightning Bolt from the opponent there. Hitting the Asylum Visitor. Ooh. Drawn a Liberator Malak here coming in. Fiery Temper off the top once again. We're so close. Let's see. I think we want to dis discard Fiery Temper and hit them directly. They're down to five here. Pass turn for the opponent. Treetop Village looks like they may be attacking in with everybody. Nope, just Drana. Okay. Drana is a 6-7 right now. Blood Crypt from the opponent. They're hitting a lot of land, which is good for us. And we keep hitting pretty good value. Condemned for us here. Let's maybe go for a looting instead of a condemned. If we hit a land drop, we can get a uh, blood gas back from the graveyard. Yeah, let's we got a, we got a land drop there. Let's do that. They have two blockers. We don't really have a way to uh, pump the fury blade. We could still attack in though, but I think we might want to wait a turn. Let's wait a turn. Bloodstained Mire sack for the opponent getting into a overgrown tomb pass. Drawing a single card here. Wish we had an Asylum Visitor on the battlefield, but we do not. Opponent bolted that. 
Past turn. Ooh, Encourageable Youths off the top is pretty much perfect. Let's go Encourageable Youths. Sacrifice that. What a top deck. And let's just swing in for everything. That should do it, right? Yeah. Let's see what they got. They got Treetop Village. That's it. No, they're scooping up. Very nice. Ah, oh, that was awesome. All right, let's get into match five here. The final match of this video. Treetop Village is such a great card for that deck list there. Really interesting game so far. Let's go with a uh, hmm, Mulligan. Three lands, go to keep. Condemned on top, I'll take that all day long. Let's go Blood Crypt and pass. Eight cards in hand going into a tap land. Let's go with a Vampire first. Again, Fury Blade Vampire, low key, all star of this deck list. Amazing card, love this card. Cannot believe it's doing so much work. We got a Mountain from the opponent here. Visions of Brutality, interesting card for the opponent. This means whenever I deal damage, we actually take that much damage. So we want to be able to uh, deal more damage to the board state or to the opponent with the stuff we have here. Going to go with an Asylum Visitor into a Faithless Looting. I think we want to get rid of the Swamp and maybe the Condemned. Captivating Vampire and Pariah are both very good here. Say no, though. Let's get in for one. And of course, the Brutality means we're down to 19. We can't block with that creature either. Dragon Skull Summit from the opponent coming in for a uh, Eternal Scourge. Collects Brutality is okay, not amazing here. I think we want to go with a uh, Cathfitting Vampire here or a Pariah. Let's go Cathfitting Vampire here. Hmm. You could discard a Collect Brutality if you want to, or just pass turn. Let's see if they have a removal spell for the Cathfitting Vampire. Would love to be able to play the Pariah this turn. That would be my main goal. We'll see, though. Dombri Raid from the opponent. Let's see. The Scourge maybe fighting the uh, Vampire? Cathfitting Vampire? That's a possibility here. Four cards in hand. Yep, they're going to fight. Yeah, that makes sense. Land from the opponent, or for us. I think we want to go with an attack here because Pariah's uh, coming in here. I'm going to play that. And then we attack Domri Raid with the 4 2. Keep in mind the 4 2 has trample, so. Ooh, a natural endurance here. The trample does still go through, which is going to, you know, destroy the, uh, the Domri Raid, so. That's fine. Mutiny for the opponent on the Pariah. Such a weird deck list here. Encourageable Youth is not terrible. We could look at their hand here and we can gain some life. Let's see what their hand looks like. They have one card, which is Flying Tendrils. We're going to pass turn here. We're going to be able to draw some cards with the Asylum Visitor this turn, which is pretty good. Fiery Temper is not bad. We do need another red mana, though. Looks like they're going to get in for uh, five. We don't want to block with the uh, the Scourge here. We'll just take the damage. Do it to go to eight. Pariah off the top for us. Hmm. Maybe go Faithless Looting. Yeah, let's go Faithless Looting from the graveyard here. Draw two cards, discard two cards. Pariah and Fiery Temper are very good. We just don't really have anything. Let's get... Ooh, I got a Bloodcast here. Let's discard a Bloodcast and maybe a Pariah. Actually, discard the uh, Fiery Temper. Can't use it, though. Go Bloodstained Mire. Bring that in. Can't block. Let's attack in for three. And uh, pass turn here. One card in hand for the opponent, drawing into their second here. Spawning bed from the opponent here. That's a very good card for the 2-5 uh, the there. Keep in mind the power is equal to the number of colorless creatures, I believe, that's on the battlefield. Getting in 2-5. Not sure why they didn't attack with a Scourge there. We're down to 6. Let's go with a Bloodstained Mire Sack. Go for a Mountain. 
Condemned is pretty good. Wish we had gotten a blood crypt there instead of a, a mountain. Or a swamp instead of a mountain. Kind of limits us on what we can do this turn. I think we still want to play the Condemned here, just to pressure the opponent. Let's get in for five. Yeah, we're going to discard the Pariah here. This means the Scourge does die, and that's a 1-5 now. And if they hit a land off the top here, the spawning bed will make the 1-5 uh, the quite powerful. They did hit a land. Oh, and we don't block. So that means that this actually becomes a 4-5. Um, a Down to 1 here. We do draw a card from the Visitor, but it actually kills us. So let's get into ma uh, game 2 here. Bringing in Gatekeeper. Uh, bringing maybe some of Braids. We could bring some of Braids in if we want to. Let's take out Asylum Visitor. Maybe take out Pariah. And uh, just hit submit. Opponent giving the old GG in the chat there. Going to be on the play on this one. Would like to see. That's an okay hand for us. Four lands, two creatures, and a Faithless Looting. Let's go with the Faithless Looting immediately. We're going to discard probably the uh, Faithless Looting and Swamp. Let's pass turn here. Mounted from the opponent into a Bromac Courier. Very interesting. Let's go for a, a Blood Crypt here and get out a Fury Blade Adapt. Again, just amazing card for us. Going to say no to that discard outlet. And they have seven cards in hand here. Tap land for the opponent. No attacks. Let's go Bloodstained Mire. Go for a Swamp. Let's go for Captivating Vampire now and get in for 2-3. Uh, down to 18. Seven cards in hand going for a six. Hanwar Battlements, looks like. Let's block with the Captivating Vampire here and see if they have something. Unnatural Endurance. Okay. Scourge there. Let's go with a Condemned here. Keep in mind the uh, Scrounger cannot block, so we can just discard the Bloodgast and get in for four, which is not bad. Down to 14. Four cards in hand for the opponent. Tap land. Getting in for four here. Again, we could block if we want to. I'm just assuming they have another endurance, so we're going to just take the damage. We'd love a black mana for that pariah. That's the main goal right now is to get into some black mana. Ooh, visions of beyond. Or brutality, not beyond. Visions of brutality onto the vampire here. Let's go visitor here. Going to discard that and get in for six. Again, we go down to eight as well. We have a three one to block on the Bomat Courier or the Scrounger, so either way, we should be fine. I'm going to block the Scrounger here, just to take one instead of three. Let's see if they have another Endurance. They do not, or have chosen not to use it, at least. Four cards in hand for the opponent. Encourageable Youth is actually quite good here. Let's go Encourageable Youths. They're tapped out completely. And if they don't have a Bolt here, we might see a GG. Causal X Return. Okay. This does cause our board state to die, but we still have a Encourageable Youth that's a 5-4. So we still get in for 5. Not bad. Let's see them have a follow-up play. Let's see Urborg. Four cards in hand. Sky Schooner into a Visions of Brutality onto our 4-3. Okay. We have a Swamp here, which is not bad. And Blood Gas, of course, come back. And that should do it, actually. Let's go Looting here, though. And we also have a Fiery Temper, so that's going to do it. Nice. Let's get into uh, Game 3 here. Graft Digger's Cage think about, but I don't really think that's that interesting for us. I think we just want to hit submit. We could bring in some Fatal Pushes if we want to, or some Abrades. But the, uh, the Regenerate card they have in their deck list makes that a little bit more difficult. A little bit spicier than normal. Three cards in hand for us, or three, three mana in, in, in our hand. Got a decent turn one, two, and three play. Tap land for the opponent. Let's go with a Gorger. Pass turn. Let's see. 
where opponent's at in the match. Six cards in their hand, going for a Swamp. <clears throat> Bowmat Courier. Attacking in for one. We don't want to trade just yet. Let's go with a Vampire and get in for two. Encourageable Youths on turn three is always amazing, so really happy to see that as well, especially with the Vampire on the battlefield too, Fury Blade Vampire. Another Courier. Um, we're going to take it. Not worrying about the uh, the damage, really. Let's go with a discard on the Fury Blade, get rid of Encourageable Youths, and cast that. There we go. Let's get in for 10. 10 points of damage on turn three. <laughs> so good. Down to eight for the opponent. Four cards in hand. Battlements here. Garrison, okay. Hmm. Let's go Blood Crypt here. Let's go Asylum Visitor and Fury Blade Adapt here. Let's discard the... Making sure we discard to the, to the correct Vampire. Let's get in for 10 once again. Let's see how they block here. I assume the Garrison will block the Fury Blade Adept. Or Fury Blade Vampire. I don't know why I keep wanting to say Adept. Fury Blade Vampire. We'll see though. Blocking the 2 1, making sure it survives. And the 4 2 is blocking the 1 1 and the 4 3. Yeah, there's unnatural endurance. Does cause it to trade or regenerate, but they do lose the Beaumont Courier as well. They're down to 5 here. Sky Scourger or Schooner or however you want to say it. Getting in for 2 3, making 2 2 2s. Two uh, we'll just take that down to 11. Pariah is super good here. Let's discard that and go for a Pariah. And uh, let's see how they're going to block here. That 1-2 can definitely trade with the 3-1. So can the Courier. And the Pariah being a huge threat is also very good as well. We'll see, though. One card in hand. Will it be Unnatural Endurance? <laughs> there it is. And they do sacrifice the courier here. This gives us the, the option here to go for the pariah where they have to sacrifice basically everything except the garrison. I think that's quite good. They would still take four going to one, I believe. Yeah. We'll do that. And now all we need is a fiery temper off the top and we should close the game out here. We'll see though. Visions of brutality going to the pariah. Interesting pick there, since the uh, the Fury Blade adept or Fury Blade Vampire has Trample, getting in for four here. We can go down to seven. I think opponent is uh, oopsing on that. Encourageable use off the top is pretty much perfect. <laughs> Never mind math. I got gotcha. you. Math is hard. I agree with that. Let's get in youths and uh, let's see, we're down to seven. Let's get in for lethal if we can. Again, keep in mind the trample trigger here. Let's see. Do they have a blocker for everything? Looks like they do not. Oh, Kozlek's return here, okay. We can't go with a flip here. Let's go with a flip. Just making sure that uh, we do get something out of that trigger. They're still at one. We have a six three or six five. All right. Fury Blade Vampire here. Double checking their Visinger brutality, saying, how are we still alive? <laughs> or how are we not at one? Uh, but I believe it only, only matters whenever we do combat damage to like the opponent. Yeah. Getting in for four here. And a Cat Fighting Vampire and Fury Blade Va Vampire off for us. We're just going to attack in, though, a 6 5 in the air. And that's going to close out the game. Where's that land was untapped? Oh, for the garrison there? Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. That's it. Nice.
All right, guys, those were the matches. That was the deck list and the deck tech. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like if you like it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We have a ton of content coming out every single weekday on this channel. And of course, share this video around with your friends. Let them know the majesty of Madness Vampires. This deck was so much fun to make, and I just cannot wait to get into more modern stuff. So there's so much fun to be had in modern, and uh, again, I'm just kind of scratching the surface. Again, trying to get into modern more and more, but let me know any kind of decks you want me to cover in the modern format in the comments down below. I'll definitely try and see if I can cover them. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I love you all, and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome NFTG content just like this. And make sure to tap the bell icon to be notified whenever a video is made live. If you want to keep watching content, here are two more videos for you. This video and many others are sponsored by MTGO Traders and Cape Fear Games. Buy and sell digital singles to build your online collection today with MTGO Traders, and get your paper singles, accessories, and much more from Cape Fear Games. Whatever your magic needs, both places have you covered.